Yu-Gi-Oh! is a constantly evolving game. We began with cracking packs and building with what we had, though in recent years, singles have become significantly more accessible and changed the way we build decks. However, Mario and I, we are going back to the basics. Each week, 1v1 sealed only. We are allotting ourselves $60 Canadian each episode and singles are forbidden. The goal is to be the first to win 25 matches and whoever does so will receive a full case from their opponent. $1,000 of product is on the line. You're watching Sealed Only 1v1. Welcome to Sealed Only 1v1, the inaugural episode. Today, we are endeavoring into a lot of firsts. We are picking up our very first product, building our very first deck, and playing our very first match. However, that does all start with a single decision, and that is what deck we will be playing with. I'm personally going to go with something very GX era, of course. I mean, very on brand, but we are going with Cyber Dragons. It, to me, is an incredibly nostalgic deck. I still remember way back in like 2005, buying boxes of Cybernetic Revolution in the hopes and the attempts of pulling those Cyber Dragons to interject into my post GOAT format deck. And with that, it's episode one. We are going to jump into this. We're going to head out, pick up our very first product, and start something special together. So, let's do just that. We'll be purchasing the majority of our product from Game Nation. The owner, Ray, is one of the most genuinely wonderful people I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. It's home to some incredible players like that of Ryan Yu and Jesse Cotton, and they also have a wild amount of classic sealed product, which we'll definitely be taking advantage of throughout the series. So we are back and we got very lucky. Here we have our three Cyber Dragon structures. Pretty wild considering these came out way back in like 2014. I do believe Ray actually did have more. So if you guys are interested and in the area, do go and check it out. Um, with that, we're gonna crack these open and see just what's inside. In the structures, we do have Integra cards like Core, Repair Plant, Nova, and of course, the classic Cyber Dragon. Now, notably cards you will not see here include Cyber Dragon, Hers, Galaxy Soldier, Nashor, Seeger, Infinity, Emergency, Overflow, Overload, Cyberload, Rev System, Machine Dupe, which is Tiro, All Mirage, Levineer, Vertite, Dragoon, Megafleet, Rampage, One for One, Foolish, Hand Traps, or other commonly played cards. So our first list will look a little unorthodox. With that said, in terms of deck building, I did decide to consult with a much more informed community, that being the Cyber Dragon Duelists up over on Facebook. Now, I have a number of friends in there and I knew they'd lead me in the right direction, so I was given a couple of lists that only did utilize the three structures and a lot of them shared the same pragmatic reasoning, so I felt like we were on the right track. So the early strategy is essentially to use Altanen to clear the board, then use a power bond or limiter removal on a cyber twin to then swing in for game. Very OTK oriented. The trap cyber network will also provide great synergy with Altanen and render some really interesting late game plays should our initial strategy fail. But with that, we are now going to take a look at our list. So we're going to start off our Cyber Dragon profile with three of the original Cyber Dragons, followed by three Cyber Dragon core. This will eventually be the best normal summon in the deck. However, right now it's a little lackluster as we don't have access to cards like Cyber Emergency, Cyber Rev System, Cybernetic Overflow. So it'll get a lot better, but right now if it's in the graveyard and our opponent controls a monster, we can banish it to special a Cyber from deck. So not bad. Then we have currently what is probably the best normal summon in Cyber Dragon Dre. When it's summoned, it becomes a level five and it makes all other Cyber Dragons level five. So these two are an instant Nova. Then we have three pretty bad cards, but we're playing it for the name. We have three Cyber Valley for a little bit of stall and the deck has some pretty neat synergy with the Banish Pile, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the profile. Here we have our Solar Wind Jammer. It is our unofficial fourth Cyber Dragon. Then we have an incredible card in Cyber Altanen. It sends all other face-up cards on the field to the graveyard, which is fantastic, but you actually summon it by banishing Light Machines, which we play a myriad of. Now, that again is important because, well, we'll talk about it in the traps. 
Here we have three light hexiod fusions. This enables our first win con in Cyber Twin, as does our power bond. Then we play our limiter removal to make it even bigger. Here we have three mystical space typhoons, which I don't know if I really like against Mario. He's playing Light Sworn. He's probably not going to be playing a lot of traps, but I figured, you know what? Week one, we don't have a lot to work with and we'll give it a try. Then we have three Cyber Repair Plant. Then we have an incredibly important card in Cyber Network. Now we've essentially built the deck around this card and it's something that you don't commonly see in Cyber Dragons, but it's pretty cool. So essentially what happens is you flip it up, then on your third standby phase after activation, it destroys itself. And when it destroys itself, you can special summon all of your banished light machines. Now you're banishing a bunch of them with the Cyber Altanen, you are banishing your Cyber Valleys. So there's a lot in that pile generally, but it's also adding to that pile because if you have a Cyber Dragon on your field during the main phase, you can activate this to then send a Light Machine from your deck to that banished pile. So again, you're getting a lot there and when it's destroyed, you get to summon a myriad of monsters, great for late game pushes, and you can actually pop it prematurely by using your MST. So there's a lot of cool plays. When we get a Rampage later on, you can also pop it with that. So again, just a lot of option. Then we have our three Wabaku, and we're playing this because our opponent is playing Lightsworn, he's playing Judgment Dragon Turbo at this point, I believe. So we want something to keep us alive. That is the main deck, and then for the extra, we have three Cyber Dragon Nova. It will become significantly more useful when we have additional combo pieces and things like Infinity. We also have three Cyber Twin Dragons as our win con, and that rounds out our deck. With that, we did only spend $45 of our $60 budget, so we are going to be opening a single pack of the 2019 Megatins. These are about $10 each in Canada. We can't really find these sealed tins. So through the series, we'll be working through these. So in the pack here, what we're really looking for are cards like Seeger, Hers, perhaps a Rev System, Veer, Overflow. But we are looking at a Performapal, a Bear Blocker. We have a Patchwork Fluffle, a Trickstar Link, followed by a couple other okay cards, and then a Cyber Rev System. Our very first pack pulling an actually useful card. Then we also have the Dangers, which I didn't initially consider, but I do like the idea of at least the Thunder. Thunderbird. It allows us to draw into better combo pieces. It is a big beater going second. I think we'll put that in the deck and we won't go with the Mothman because we really don't want him discarding Light Swarms. With that, we didn't get anything in the rest of the commons, but I am very happy with this pack and I do think we'll swap out two of the worst Cyber Dragons for the Thunderbird and the Rev System. Hey everyone, Mario from Mario's Gaming World here. For our sealed only challenge, we're going to start with three Realm of Light Structure decks released in 2014. And we have them, right here. In the Structure deck, you will find your staple Light Swarns like Raiden, Lumina, Wolf, along with Judgment Dragon, and your good support spells such as Charge Light Brigade and Solar Recharge. What you will not find are the cards that came after that make Light Swarms amazing, such as Chaos Space, the Perform Age cards, Chaos Creator, and really good extra deck monsters. So we have some work to do. So this is the deck we're working with. Working with the best Light Swarms, three Raiden, three Lumina, and three Wolf. You'll see these varied throughout the entire challenge. Two Minerva to help search Judgment Dragon, Bunch of random one-off names to help with Minerva and Judgment Dragon. May or may not actually use them, who knows? Three Judgment Dragon to blow up the field in the early stages. Two extra special summons, just to have them, extra damage. Zephyros to combo and bounce things. Three Honest, three Necrogardena, so we don't die to Cyber Dragons. Three Charge to mill and search anything. Three Recharge to draw and mill. Two Sanctuaries, which lets us build counters and toggle Light Swarms, could be helpful. Foolish Burial is good. Two Call of Haunted is what that is. And we got three Michael in the extra deck, spot removal, and recovery. So that's our starting Light Sworn deck. It cost us $45. We have $15 left. We have three packs of Toon Chaos. Ideally, we'll pull one of these guys, the Chaos Creator, but we really do need three Chaos Space, and a Chaos Valkyrie wouldn't hurt too. 
let's see what we can do. Ryan wanted me to get some pack opening ASMR, so here we go. Starting off here with Masked Hero Vapor, True King Lithosagem the Disaster, Cow Sorcerer is neat, might find its way into the deck maybe, Crossover, Keeper of Dragon Magic, Chaos Zone, not really good, and Bamboozling Gossip Shadow. We have a fourth extra deck card I guess. Pack number two. Got another Chaos Zone, Gear Breed, Pot of Desires is actually cool, Crossover, Witch of the Black Forest, Shout Out to Goat, Gemini Ablation, and Master of Acid. Uh, nope, pack three. And for our final pack, we got Curse of Dragonfire, got Sanifon the Sky Prison, Masked Hero Goka, Masked Hero Dian, another disaster, another witch, and crap. All right. So in our Toon Chaos packs, we got nothing I really wanted. So we're just going to go to the shop and play with our three structure decks today. Mario wins the dice roll and opts to go first, which is definitely ideal for us. He drew, and his hand did seem to be pretty lackluster, so he summoned a Raiden and milled two with its effect. From there, he went to end phase and milled two more, actually hitting a wolf and giving himself some extra board presence, and despite drawing our sixth card, we can still do next to nothing. We can't make a cyber twin, we can't activate our revs or our power plant, and summoning the Dre just to banish it with the Altanen would be a big waste of resources. So I thought long and hard about our next play. I thought back to my months of coaching with Jesse Cotton. I thought, what would Jesse do? Don't ever set a monster, turn one. And with that in mind, I threw down a face down. <laughs> now I would like to mention that I didn't just do that for the meme. I figured once Dre was engraved, we could use our repair plant on the next turn, search a Cyber Dragon core, activate revs to bring back the Dre, normal the core, search a card, and then use the power bond to make a twin. Also, Jesse, I appreciate you. Mario drew and still couldn't do much, so he milled two with Raiden, hitting a Zephyros, and swung into my set Dre. Next, the wolf attacked me directly for 2100, and in the main phase two, he set a monster and passed, milling two more cards. I drew into a Cyber Dragon, which offered me a much safer play. I began with the Repair Plant, searched a core, banished the Dre, engraved to summon the Altanen, and cleared his face-up monsters. Next, we summoned our core and searched a Repair Plant for the following turn. Power Bond was then used to fusion summon a Cyber Twin, and I activated my rev system to summon the Cyber Dragon from a Graveyard. Next, we entered battle, Cyber Twin swung into the Necro, which blocked the next attack, and from there we did 2600 damage with both the Cyber Dragon and the Altanen. In the end, I did take 2800 from Power Bond. While we could have run over them with a Cyber Twin, if he had Honest, we would have hard lost, and he had a couple of cards in hand, he wasn't comboing off, so I assumed that he had a hand trap in the form of a 2008 card called Honest. Now, while Mario's board was broken, his graveyard was full, so he summoned a Judgment Dragon, paid a thousand life points, and destroyed the entirety of our board. He followed that up with a Raiden and swung in with both, taking the very first game of the series.
Game 2, I made Mario go first, and he simply said a monster and passed, so it's safe to say that his hand wasn't all that ideal. I drew fairly decently and saw the opportunity to do some big damage, so I specialed my Cyber Dragon, Normal Summoned a Hexed, fused into Cyber Twin, and entered battle. From there, we swung into the set monster and attacked directly for 2800, saving the power bond for future push. Mario began with a Foolish on Raiden, which he intended to bring back. Next, he normal summoned a Lumina, discarded a Wolf to summon the Raiden in Grave, then used the Raiden to mill two. He did hit a Minerva, which allowed him to mill an additional card, though we did get lucky, and it was just an honest. Next, he Synchro Summoned for a Michael for the very first time in the series and used its effect to banish the Cyber Twin by paying 1,000 life points. He entered battle and swung in for 2,600, making the game fairly even. Then, during the end phase, he milled three and hit a wolf. While Twin was banished, we still did have some recovery plays, so I normal summoned my core, searched a red system, and then activated it to bring back our Cyber Dragon from the graveyard. From there, I activated Power Bond to summon a second Cyber Twin, this time with double the original attack points, and my 5600 Twin swung into the Michael, dealing 3000 damage. Michael used his effect to return two Light Swarms from deck and gain 600 life points, though that wouldn't be enough to save him from the following attack. Twin then attacked the Wolf, but Necrogardena Ingrave saved him from what would have been a game-winning swing. Mario didn't have a big follow-up this time, so he set a monster, switched Wolf to defense mode, and passed back. At this point, things are looking great, and provided that set isn't a Raikou or Necrogarda, we're in the clear. So I summon my Hex, swing with it into the Wolf, then the Twin swings him the monster, and again directly for game, tying us up at 1-1. So that was such a fun game, big pushes from both sides, but we were able to take it with the Cyber Twin. And with that, on to game three. Mario decided to make me go first, as he's pretty certain that I do not have a first turn play. And as an update, I don't. So I normal summon a Cyber Valley and pass back. I know, big 2014 combos. Mario starts by activating a Lightsworn Sanctuary and follows it up with a Charge of the Light Brigade, searching a Lumina. He proceeds to normal summon the Lumina, dump a Lumina from hand to special said Lumina, then he dumps a Raiden to special a Raiden, fulfilling every 2014 Lightsworn player's dream opening hand. Next he moves to with Raiden and synchros into Michael, which at the cost of 1000 life points banishes my valley. Mario then swings directly for 3600 and proceeds to his end phase where he moves 6, which includes yet another wolf. Things aren't looking great, but I do have a funny recovery play, so we summon our Cyber Valley in hand and then banish it with our Cyber Altanen. This sends his entire field to the graveyard and leaves us with a big boy beater of 500, which does swing indirectly. Next, we can set a single card and pass back. Unfortunately, Mario had a full grave and was actually able to summon the Diabolos. He attempted to bounce back my set card, but I activated it. It was Wabaku, saving me and my life points from any further damage this turn. Now, Raiden was summoned. He milled two, unfortunately. For me, he milled yet another wolf. Luckily, he still couldn't do any damage, so he moved to the end phase where he milled two with Raiden and one with Minerva. I draw and Power Bond is still dead, so I summon a Dre and swing into the Raiden, which he does block with a Necro Gardena. All I needed was one more material for a Power Bonded Cyber Twin, so getting rid of the Necro Gardena, that was vital. Next, I set one and pass with the hopes of drawing a Cyber Dragon on the following turn. Mario moved into main phase and used Diabolos on yet another Wabaku, which I of course chained. Then from there, he milled two with Raiden, set a monster, and moved to the end phase where he milled two more, and you guessed it, hit another wolf. I drew a rev system, which unfortunately isn't the Cyber Dragon I needed as there weren't any targets in Grave, so I swung over the Raiden and passed, accepting my comically crushing defeat. Mario confidently flips him to Zephros and swung in with his full board, taking our very first match with a strong 2-1 victory. So there we have it, the conclusion, the sealed only 1v1, the inaugural episode. 
In the end, we did not end up winning, but it was so much fun. We had some big comebacks, some big anime moments, and while the deck was a lot of fun, I do see some rather large glaring issues with it, which I do intend to fix in the next episode. We definitely need a turn one play, we need additional consistency, and if you'd like to see a little sneak peek into what I'm going to be opening every week, do follow me up over on Twitter. I will be doing some little shots for that. Did also want to mention though, this series was both heavily inspired by and just it wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Farfa and Nim Nim specifically. I love your series. I love your ideas. Um, I love you guys as people. I, I started YouTubing a year ago um, and almost immediately you guys reached out. You made a huge impact on me and my journey and I'll always be just incredibly grateful. So thank you to you guys for making the incredible content that you do. I also wanted to say a big thank you to Brandon and Rory specifically as they are our B unit director on the series. As you can probably tell, it's pretty high production and we definitely needed additional directors to film myself and Mario as we couldn't always film ourselves and we couldn't film each other, otherwise we would know what was happening. So big shout out to both of you. Thank you for doing what you did. And on the note of it being a big project, we're putting a lot of work into this. The first episode here probably took me about 70 hours in total with all of the editing and everything. So if you wouldn't mind, if you enjoyed, do consider sharing this with a friend up on your Twitter, over on Facebook. It is episode one. We want to get it out to as many people as possible. That way we can start this journey with as big of a community as we possibly can. And that is the inaugural episode. Everybody go check out Mario. He did a fantastic job. We've been great friends for like 15 years and he's um he's someone i want to support he's someone i want to see succeed he's doing a lot of cool stuff with digimon so go check him out if you haven't already but that is episode one so thank you for being here you guys take care and i will see you next week with sealed only 1v1 episode two it's pretty fun to say peace and love